Hey, all roads lead through New York, or New Jersey in this case, <laughs> as the New York Jets come back with the most improbable win maybe in the franchise's history. The New York Giants are 2-0, their best start in literally almost a decade, and my head is going to <laughs> explode. So why don't we start with the Jets, since we just showed you Joe Flacco coming into the locker room and bear-hugging Robert Sala, their head coach. According to Next Gen Stats, okay, it is the most improbable win since they started tracking games <laughs> back in 2016, and it defies all logic. It proves once again that there is always a city and a team worse than yours. And that city is always Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> well, they also had the leprechaun in the middle of the field for the first yes. time, 0-1. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're 0-1 with uh, Brownie the Elf. 0-1. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here's what's amazing about it. First, Corey Davis gets wide open, what, 65-yard touchdown. Flacco saw, makes a good pass. All right, then you have the onside kick. What people don't recognize is that's Amari Cooper mm -hmm. on Cleveland. He's their best you know, wide receiver, got yeah. the best hands, who doesn't make the play. And what a lot of people are going to start talking about predates uh, the Davis touchdown, predates the onside kick, and happened before the drive down the field where uh, their new rookie sensation catches the game-winning touchdown pass, and it's the Chubb touchdown run. Mm -hmm. And there's people now being critical that if Chubb just takes a knee, and here's it's a great run, by the way, if he goes out of bounds or takes a knee there on the cutback, the Jets are out of timeouts. Cleveland takes three knees, and the game is over. Yep. And there's a great story out there right now that uh, the New York Jets wide receiver coach, uh, who formerly played Miles Austin, mm -hmm. has this is now becoming a legend of this big win, that he looked at, to some of the guys on the sideline, and when Chubb scored the touchdown, he told guys, they just gave us a chance to win. Wow. Mind-boggling. <laughs> Mind-boggling. This offense stinks, and we're going to score two touchdowns in a minute 30, and that's what we did. I'll tell you what, man. I've been to Amari Cooper, too. You, you, it's just a tough position to be in as a receiver. No matter how good your hands are, that ball fluttering like this, coming at your ankles, you don't know what to do, okay? There's no plan for that football. But, yeah, man, I think it's all hypothetical, too. You, don't, you never know what's going to happen in that situation. Let's say Nick Chubb takes a knee. You, you just don't know. You know what I mean? So, it's just tricky being a Jet uh, and understanding how they got that win. It's just an incredible, completely busted coverage by the Browns on that right. one pass. Right, the Davis, Davis touchdown, right. And then an absolute dart by your guy, Joe Cool, at the end there. Joe Mo. Joe Mo Cool. <laughs> I mean, Joe an, Mo an listen, absolute dart. Uh, yeah, and listen, Flacker right now, amazingly, is third in the NFL in passing yards. He's got the most completions in football. And every Jet fan is dying for Zach Wilson <laughs> to come back as quickly as possible. But that's the kind of game the Jets usually lose. Yeah. Like, they would be on the other side of it. They would have blown the lead. Yeah, we had gone 13 straight September games without a win. Uh, and listen, I don't want to overstate it because they've got an 0-2 Cincinnati Bengal team that's really ticked off, who's now lost back-to-back -back games on a kick late, mm -hmm. uh, which we'll get to in a second. But we get to enjoy something good in our lives, which we don't normally get to enjoy. So I want to give the Jets credit. Yeah, listen, you give up 30 should. points to the Browns, you should never win, <laughs> nor should you ever give up 30 points to the Browns. But if someone had told me that the New York Jets were going to score two touchdowns in a minute 30 to win the game, also a missed extra point there uh, by the Browns stud kicker, and here we are. Yep. The Jets are 1-1, one and one, and the Super Bowl is still on the table. No, <laughs> it's not. But what? as a Jet fan, are you – that tug with Sala right there from yes. Flacco, is that better than the hug of Iceman and Maverick at the end of Top Gun for you? <laughs> well, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. That's one of my favorite Too early movies. To know. Too early and to they tell. did kill the bogeys at the enemy. <laughs> uh, but that was fake like wrestling. So this was much, much better. This is also – Two guys that dealt with it the last week, right? Yeah. Robert Sala with his ridiculous press conference telling the media and the fan base he's keeping receipts. Joe Flacco, who had a terrible week one game against Baltimore. Uh, that's what that is. That's a culmination of two guys who've been through the ring are pretty good. And that's just something to say about guys that, you know, athletes specifically when their backs are against the wall. Yeah. I mean, that's what it boils down to. That dart over the middle that we just saw, that seam ball was an incredible pass. Yep. And then seeing the busted coverage to Corey Davis for the 66-yarder was incredible. And the onside kick was teach tape.
Yeah, and listen, and there's something to be said, and I know I'm going to be guilty of overstating it, uh, of never quitting, yeah. of not rolling over and dying. Mm -hmm. And if that's the takeaway from this game, then I'll give the Jets credit for that because there's a lot to be critical of in the Jets when they didn't play very good football mm -hmm. in giving up 30 points to the Browns. Meanwhile, their crosstown rivals, the New York Giants, are right now for the moment in first place in yeah. the NFC. Say it a little louder, Carl. I don't right. think they heard you. The New heard York you. Giants <laughs> are in first place pending tonight's uh, Eagles game, of course. But 2-0, first time uh, since 2016. And uh, listen, you know better than I because I'm sure you still talk to some of the guys yeah. there. It is a different feeling. Uh, listen, winning helps all that. Their offense has not really clicked yet, but Daniel Jones did not make the big mistake yesterday. Mm -hmm. Use his feet and his arm to make key plays, get first downs when it mattered. Uh, Saquon Barkley's a different dude this year mm -hmm. than he was the last two years coming yeah. off the knee injury. And Brian Dable is just different. Like all the things I didn't like about Joe Judge and McAdoo before him, Dable is different. Like and there was a moment in yesterday's game, and I wonder how you'd react to it. Okay. And we saw it in week one also. Mm -hmm. Danny Jones threw a bad interception, and Dable's in his ear. Mm -hmm. Well, yesterday he was mad at the line. I think it was the offensive line wasn't protecting. And he brought him over and ripped him a new one. Mm -hmm. And I think guys ultimately, while well, you don't want to be embarrassed, yeah. respect that. Yeah, I think because he built that during the practice, during training camp. He's built that equity with this, with this football team. I think they love him because of how real he is, and he listens to them. And, and they have a really good time practicing. There's music on the – I mean, I walked into practice during training camp, and I hear mute. there's a DJ on the field. Really? There's, like, energy. When Joe Judge was the coach, it was like a library. Like, you could literally go out there, and I was scared to talk. I was whispering to the guys. <laughs> like, at practice, I'm like, is it okay to talk during this section? Because it just right. felt tight, you know? And yeah. Dayball is there, and everybody's loose and relaxed, and the coaching staff kind of embodies that. But they take care of their business in the meeting rooms. They take care of their business between those lines when they're supposed to. And they're just playing this free, relaxed football. And it shows, man, but they're getting these gritty, gritty wins. And I've been sweating watching these games. But um, when Daniel Jones doesn't turn the ball over, takes care of the football, makes the right decisions with the ball, Saquon Barkley making those opportunistic runs. Um, they're just a different football team right now. But we're going to need more production out of these receivers and out of these playmakers because it's not, you know, we're going to see eight, nine-man boxes from week in and week out now the way Saquon's been playing, and those guys on the outside have to make plays. Yeah, apparently Kenny Galladay really didn't play at all yesterday, yeah. and they were asked about that, and he's a huge price tag veteran from last year, and uh, Dable said, listen, we told him before the game that he wasn't going to play a lot. He handled it like a veteran. Of course, he's ticked off, and he rolled out of the locker room early because he didn't want to deal with the questions. Also but a veteran move. Yeah, right. <laughs> listen, also a veteran if move. I can get dressed before you come in, I ain't got to talk to you. Yeah, done. But he's, up, he's upset. He's, got, he's a proud of course, man. Of, of course. course, he's upset. But what Dable said after the game was, listen, he knew going into the game he wasn't going to get much run in the game. Because for whatever reason, we felt the other guys presented different problems, you know, uh, in that game that, that he didn't bring to the table, and that's fine. I just and I think as long know, as you know going in, right? I need to know what it is, though. Like, it, is it production? Is he just not doing well in practice? Is he not knowing his assignments? Because, again, that's a heavy price tag to have just sitting on your sideline sure. taking up space. You want to see what he brings to the table. You want to see what type of player he is. Can he make those big plays that we've seen him make in Detroit all those years? Can he bring that to the Giants? Which is what I thought coming in. I was ecstatic to have this guy as a yeah, receiver. Yeah, he was number the one number guy. one free agent. Like, uh, I was receiver. like, this is, we're good. We got our number one guy, and we, we can well, make it play. They won without him. And they, listen, you beat Baker Mayfield, you bought to play your asses off. <laughs> that's the best of all. My Baker, my Baker stock's going down. <laughs> Way down. <laughs> it's it's exploding in front of me. You know, the big Monday night game, which we have plenty of time to get to later this week, mm -hmm. but you have the one-on-one -on -one Cowboys now coming to New York to play the Giants in a Monday night game. And that place is going to be a zoo. So I guess my early question for mm -hmm. you, and I will hold you to it, I suppose. Of course you will. Are the Giants literally, are they good enough now after two weeks? Is this team for real, when I say real, a chance to win the East? Well, I, I think so. And I think because of what I've seen from the defense and, and special teams and being opportunistic and, and creating turnovers and getting after the quarterback, which they could do some more of, especially when Thibodeau comes back, they get some guys back off an of injury. But I think they're in a good position right now. And I think they're ascending, which is a good thing. I think they've squeezed out these couple wins and they're ascending and trending in the right direction at least. But this is going to be a huge test for them. Obviously, Cooper Rush and the Cowboys coming in, they got some momentum. They yep. got some energy there because of uh, this past weekend and how they played. But they have to have 
uh, some trepidation going in, but I think they're ascending and heading in the right direction, which is all we could listen. These past 10 years have been rough, guys. Yes. Okay? <laughs> Some ascension, trending in the right. These are all words that I haven't used in the past couple of years. Yeah. The fact that I'm using these words and I'm smiling after a Giants win and I'm talking to Carton, who's a lovely Jets fan, and he hates this stuff right now. I'm great. I feel good about it. Listen, I'm in a good mood. There you go. You guys can win as much as you want as long as I win as, as much as <laughs> exactly, I want. Exactly. And the Jets stealing, like, thank God for Cleveland. <laughs> like, I told you, all good things usually go to die in Cleveland in this case, the Jets went there and found life mm -hmm. because they're 90 seconds away from being 0-2 and Robert Sala's on the hot seat because you've got the 0-2 Bengals next week mm -hmm. and that is not going to be easy. So thank you, Cleveland, <laughs> simply for being who you are, losers. Oh my God. <laughs> I lived there for a year. I've got the right to say it. L-O-S-E-R, <laughs> losers. Hey there, thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.